Hello, my name is Willie Harper. Uh, I'm a bariatric surgeon here at St. Bernard's Medical Center. I'd like to welcome you to our uh, bariatric surgery seminar. Uh, I hope that this seminar is, is informative for you and I hope that uh, this answers many, of your, answers many of your questions about bariatric surgery. Uh, bariatric surgery is something that's near and dear to my heart because it it's, it's helps a lot of people uh, when it comes to uh, losing weight and uh, keeping their weight off as well as uh, reaching some of their overall health goals. So it's been an instrumental tool in, in a number of individuals throughout this country and I'm proud to offer it here uh, in Jonesboro, Arkansas here at St. Bernard's. The title of our seminar is St. Bernard's Weight Loss Surgery, Helping You Discover a Healthier You. Uh, this is, is so true in the sense that uh, bariatric surgery nowadays is a lot more than losing weight. It's more about becoming an overall healthier individual, which means, uh, and a lot of times, getting rid of some of the comorbidities that may plague our population. Um, this is more so uh, prevalent today in our, our patients who suffer uh, from issues like diabetes and high blood pressure. Uh, this, this bariatric surgery has become a tool for these patients to uh, enjoy life fuller because they are not plagued with these these problems. So that's the reason for our our title slide, helping you become a healthier you, because really that's what it's all about. Why have your surgery here at St. Bernard's Medical Center? I feel as though St. Bernard's is, is one of the leading institutions when it comes to health care in Northeast Arkansas. Uh, we are equipped with highly trained surgeons and support staff uh, that cater to uh, the bariatric patient. Uh, I myself have trained uh, specifically in bariatrics. Uh, I attained a fellowship uh, uh, in the field of bariatric surgery. So I, in my experience, have seen uh, many patients afflicted with obesity and have helped many of those patients uh, to reach their weight loss goals and also uh, to become overall healthier individuals. Here at St. Bernard's, uh, we specialize in the care of the morbidly obese patient as well as their family. Uh, we feel as though bariatric surgery is not only something that will affect the patient directly, but it will also impact uh, the family of the patient because uh, it will overall inspire the family to help the patient to reach their goal. And in doing that, a lot of the times the patient's family become healthier throughout the process. So we're excited about treating not only the patient but their family as well. We genuinely, genuinely uh, want to help you reach your goals. I'm a goal-oriented person. Uh, in the program we talk a lot about goal setting uh, and what will it take to help the patient achieve their goal. Uh, I think this is very important for us to target have a target for you to reach because that makes it more likely uh, that you will be successful in the long term. We are also on the path to becoming an accredited bariatric, accredited bariatric surgery center. Uh, I believe this is important because this gives us a benchmark to strive for when it comes to quality care in the field of uh, bariatrics. So who is a potential uh, bariatric surgery candidate? Generally it's someone uh, over the age of 18. There are uh, surgery, uh, bariatric surgery centers that perform bariatric surgery on pediatric patients. Uh, however, our program uh, targets patients who are older than the age of 18. These also uh, uh, requirements are that patients have several failed attempts uh, at weight loss, uh, which is the majority of our population. Uh, patients typically have health complications related to obesity. Uh, and no psychological uh, contraindications or reasons that they should not have surgery. Uh, it requires that patients have good understanding of each particular surgery and its risk as it applies to them. And it also mandates that patients are compliant with diet and exercise. I'll pause here because diet and exercise is a key component in your overall success when it comes to bariatric surgery. And you'll hear me talk about that uh, throughout the program and emphasize that because I want each and every one of my patients to be successful long term. Generally, uh, candidates are 100 pounds or more above their ideal body weight. 
and this may translate to patients with a body mass index greater than 35 with a comorbidity or a body mass index greater than 40. Let's talk a little bit about the comorbidities that's been associated with uh, obesity. These include diabetes. Uh, diabetes is a major health problem in our country today. Diabetes causes a number of other health issues and it also increases uh, the mortality risk for, our, uh, for the average individual. Um, diabetes is uh, a disease that can cause other problems which include kidney disease and kidney failure which may lead to dialysis. It also can cause uh, problems with uh, limb perfusion which ultimately may lead to limb loss in the form of amputation. Uh, all patients also suffer from problems with eyesight, uh, problems with chronic pain, these are all uh, stem from these all stem from uh, diabetes. Therefore, I'm proud to say that bariatric surgery uh, is an effective tool against diabetes. In the majority of patients that undergo bariatric surgery, uh, a lot of times di diabetes is actually eliminated, meaning that the patient no longer requires insulin therapy. Uh, they no longer re require other oral medications that try to fight diabetes. So this is something that we are very proud of in the bariatric surgery community and it's something that our patients can benefit from immensely. Other uh, comorbidities that are helped by having bariatric surgery include high blood pressure, congestive heart failure, failure joint disease, gallbladder disease, uh, edema, sleep apnea, depression, shortness of breath, irregular menstrual cycles, um, acid reflux disease. These are some of the things that have been directly linked to obesity and I'm proud to say that bariatric surgery helps to eliminate these as well. Now, uh, during the progress, uh, during your progress in, the, in our program here, uh, you will be required to undergo uh, steps of, uh, you will be required to undergo preoperative evaluations. Uh, these evaluations help to ensure that you are an adequate candidate uh, for bariatric surgery. Uh, it also helps to ensure your safety uh, during your uh, operative procedure. These include evaluations by our psychologist, uh, a nutritional evaluation. Uh, you'll be uh, evaluated uh, by an anesthesiologist to make sure that preoperatively you're at your optimum condition before going, undergoing an operation. Other tests that we may need to, uh, that we will have you undergo include chest x-ray, EKG, uh, blood work, ultrasound of your abdomen, uh, as well as an upper GI exam. Uh, these are all tools to help me evaluate you as a patient and to make sure that we offer you the operative procedure that is right for your particular health history. There are also uh, other potential preoperative evaluations that may be necessary depending upon your health history. Uh, for example, uh, if you have problems with bleeding per rectum or you may have a history of uh, heart disease or may have had a recent heart attack, uh, this may necessitate you uh, to be seen by a cardiologist prior to your procedure uh, or in the case of bleeding per rectum, it may necessitate you being seen by a gastroenterologist and we may request a colonoscopy uh, prior to proceeding with your bariatric surgery procedure. Uh, these tests aren't mandatory but again any further testing that may be necessary will be decided upon at your time of initial visit in our clinic. Now there are um, other important aspects of the program uh, that I must mention at this point. Uh, you will need to be educated from a nutritional standpoint prior to surgery. Uh, this, involves us, this involves meeting with our registered dietitian uh, who will counsel, counsel you and help you along the way uh, beginning before your operative procedure 
uh, and subsequent to your operative procedure because we found that this has become an effective tool in helping patients to reach their goal. The nutritional aspect of our program is very important and we take it seriously. Uh, that's why uh, we have you to meet with our uh, nutritionists uh, throughout your time in our program. Now, the structure of our program is centered around three visits uh, with myself, the surgeon. The first visit uh, we deem the new patient visit. This is where you and I will talk about the different surgical options that are available to you. Uh, we will also at this point perform a, a brief physical exam. Uh, we will discuss any preoperative evaluations that you may need. At this time, we'll also arrange those preoperative evaluations uh, and get you scheduled with the appropriate uh, appointments in order to complete your preoperative evaluation process. During this visit, we will also remind you of uh, what it takes to remain uh, in the program. Uh, one of the conditions that we ask our patients to meet is to cease all nicotine product usage. This includes smoking, this includes uh, uh, what we call vaping. Uh, any product that you ingest that, uh, that has nicotine in it, we ask that you cease at this point. This is very important because this uh, puts you at unnecessary risk when it comes to uh, bariatric surgery. We will remind you of this at this visit. Our second visit uh, is what we call the decision visit. Uh, this is where you and I will sit down and discuss the results of each of your preoperative evaluations. Uh, it is at this time that we will also uh, discuss the surgical procedure uh, again. This is the second time that you and I will talk about the procedure, so at this point uh, I feel as though we should be well informed of uh, the operative procedure and its associated risks and benefits. We also, at this time, will accumulate all of the information and send it to your insurance company for approval for your surgical procedure. Now, let's pause for a minute and ask the question, which surgery is right for you? Every surgery has risks, and not all patients are candidate for surgery, uh, but this is the time we will discuss uh, your surgical options. It's very important that uh, we come to a decision together as to which operative procedure that you will undergo. The there isn't a process to insurance approval. Uh, after your second visit with the surgeon, you will, uh, we will begin that process of approval. This means that we will uh, fax all relevant documentation to your insurance company uh, all requirements uh, at this time uh, that your insurance company poses will be met and uh, we will send any other relevant documentation to your insurance company uh, in support of your approval. When you are approved, we will contact you with your third appointment date. Uh, we will also at this time schedule your surgery. Your third appointment with me, uh, we call your history and physical visit. Uh, at this visit, we will perform a brief physical exam. We will again talk about your surgical procedure, its risks and its benefits. This will be the third time that you have heard uh, about your particular procedure. So at this point, you are well informed about what's going to happen to you. If any signs, any consent forms need to be signed, they will be done at this visit. If any lab work or tests need to be updated, we will do the, do the at this visit as well. Also at your third visit, we ask that you have a support person uh, present. This is important because a support person will understand what you're about to go through in terms of your bariatric surgery procedure. It's also been found that most patients who have uh, support personnel do well in the long term. We also, at this visit, will talk about your prescribed diet before your surgery. Uh, it is necessary for patients to undergo a two-week liquid diet prior to their surgery. This is important for a couple of reasons. 
One of the reasons is that it allows your liver to shrink prior to your operative procedure. This is important because we operate on organs that are directly beneath your liver. This will make the operative procedure safer for you. Uh, so this is one of the reasons that we institute a uh, liquid diet prior to surgery. A second reason is it helps to jumpstart your weight loss. This is uh, something that has a cost, but we'd like for you to know the cost up front prior to you making a decision about the operative procedure. This will better allow for you to prepare uh, for that cost. So we will discuss this uh, at well, as well. Now let's talk about the operative procedures uh, themselves. First of all, I'd like to, for everyone to understand we will begin with a laparoscopic approach regardless of which, which surgery uh, you decide to undergo. Besides being trained as a bariatric surgeon, I'm also uh, trained as a minimally invasive or a laparoscopic surgeon. This basically allows us to do very complex operations through very small incisions. This has also been associated with shorter recovery times as well as decreased pain. The operative procedure we'll discuss first is the ruin wide gastric bypass. This surgery is considered the gold standard of bariatric surgery operations. Uh, it has been performed for well over five decades and has been demonstrated to be very effective when it comes to weight loss and um, comorbidity resolution. If I can direct your attention to the slide, the picture on the left demonstrates the normal uh, GI tract anatomy. We all have our esophagus, which balloons out into our stomach, which essentially is a reservoir for food. This then narrows down into our small intestine. Our small intestine is responsible for the absorption of calories uh, when we intake food. The right side of the slide demonstrates the anatomy after a gastric bypass has been performed. During a gastric bypass, we disconnect the top third of the stomach from the bottom two thirds. Once this is done, we then reroute the small intestines to connect to the top third of the stomach, what we effectively call the pouch, and then we reconnect the intestine to itself downstream. This is all done laparoscopically through, again, very small incisions. This operation uh, is effective because it provides what we call satiety, meaning you will eat very small amounts and you won't still feel hungry after the surgery. There also is a component of what we call malabsorption where you don't absorb all of the calories from your diet that you would in your normal GI tract configuration. Again, this surgery is very effective. The second procedure we'll talk about today is called a laparoscopic sleeve gastrectomy. Uh, this is a procedure where we move, re remove effectively two-thirds of the stomach. This surgery is effective because it decreases the size of your stomach, making the reservoir smaller. This is, has been shown to be a very effective operation and it's one of the more popular, popular operations performed today uh, in the world of bariatric surgery. As you can see, these are the options that are available here at our program at St. Bernard's. And when you, come to, when you come to see us in the clinic, uh, we will discuss both operations and which particular operations may be better for you. Important things to remember about this program. One of the things is that this is indeed a program, therefore, uh, we are interested in your long-term success throughout your time with us. This is not just a surgery and then we're done. We look at this as a long-lasting relationship with you. One of the other requirements of our program is that you d discontinue all non-steroidal anti-inflammatory medications. We've already talked a little bit about nicotine products uh, but the reason uh, that you must discontinue these products is that they put you at higher risk of problems after surgery. This is not just with bariatric surgery, but any surgery uh, that you can think of. 
One of the lifestyle changes that you will incur after surgery is the way you take your medications. This is only temporary. For about three months, all medications that you take must be in the liquid or chewable form. We will help you make these changes in your medications around the time of your surgery. Another quick word about follow-up after surgery. I'd like to remind everyone that this is a lifelong commitment. Follow-up appointments begin at two weeks after your surgery. We then will see you at the three-month post-op, nine-month post-op, excuse me. We then will see you at the three-month post-op, six-month, nine-month, and 12-month post-op visits. Following your 12-month post-op visit, we will see you yearly thereafter. This is important because it is at these visits that we not only monitor your weight loss, but we also monitor your nutritional status in the form of vitamin levels and protein level. This will help to ensure that you remain healthy throughout the process of weight loss. This slide is to remind us that exercise is important. This will be an important part of your overall program. The surgery itself is only a tool to help you lose weight. We still must put in the work in terms of eating responsibly as well as exercising. What we recommend is 30 to 45 minutes of exercise daily for at least five days a week. This can come in many forms, which include walking, biking, swimming, jogging, aerobics, weight training, and water aerobics for patients who have problems with mobility. Uh, this is a very important part of your program and we will help you to develop this as well. One of my proud accomplishments with this program here at St. Bernard's is our support group. We encourage each of you to join support group prior to your surgery and remain in it after your surgery. It's been shown that patients who have a support group who undergo bariatric surgery often do well and reach their weight loss goals. Our support group meets the first Tuesday of each month at 6 p.m. here at the St. Bernard's Health and Wellness Center. Our last slide has to do with maintaining your success. Surgery is a tool to assist with weight loss, but you must be committed to making the emotional and physical changes necessary after surgery. Your commitment will ensure successful weight loss and long-term weight maintenance. Lack of exercise, poorly balanced meals, grazing, eating processed carbohydrates, and drinking carbonated beverages are some of the causes of weight regain. I'd like you to know that good habits of food intake and exercise will need to be practiced for the rest of your life. Thank you.